All right, so it's time we actually start heading into the texture section. I've showed you guys a bunch of different techniques and little tips and tricks on creating your own terrain. But what if we actually want to start texturing this terrain and getting some color and life on you as well? So I'm going to be showing you how to do that from start to finish. Uh, but just go ahead, create a new project. So we start with a clean slate and let's just quickly create a terrain over here. And this is what I'm going for, right? So I'm going to go back to surface, filters, add layer. Let's add a filter. So I'm going to go with the sediment complex. Right, I'm going to put my length on 85. Right, I'm going to add another filter, which is going to be the directional balloon under effect. Right, so I'm going to leave all of this default. I'm going to add one more uh, filter on here, which is going to be a plateau. So a clean plateau. Click OK. And there we go. Now I can maybe go to angle select over here and just adjust the angle sorry, the angle of the directional balloon, go to angle select and just adjust the angle here a little bit. Maybe let's increase the width a little bit. Let's see, it's just adding a little bit more variation to our scene. Maybe here by clean plateau. Let's see, you can maybe bring this down to something like 73. Minimum angle can be on 11. And that should be fine. So you can see we've got just a bunch of these little scattered rocks and some soft areas over here. And basically what I'm trying to go for is this is going to be like a very dark, darkish rock. And there's going to be a lot of just this brown sand that's going to be scattered in certain regions. And I'm going to be showing you some pretty cool tips and tricks and techniques on how you can texture and scatter uh, textures into predetermined areas or just to do it procedurally uh, using some presets and other effects. Okay, so I hope you guys are ready. This is the terrain I'm going for. Of course, you can go back to base. We want to make that seamless. I'm going to keep my resolution on 2K for now. You can go into base shape. And if you guys want to go ahead, edit the shape. Uh, maybe come up with something that you are happy with. So there we go. We've got a little hilltop here and it just goes down gradually into this region and we're going to scatter some sand on top of these rocks. Right, so we will be moving into the texture tab next and I'm going to be showing you how to completely texture this terrain. All right, so let's dive straight into texturing. I'm going to click on the textures tab and I'm going to click on add layer. And this works just like if we add in layers with filters. So we can obviously layer these textures on top of each other to create some more complexity within our scene. So I'm going to start off with the base. And I know I said I was going to do like these dark rocks with the sand and I'm still going to do that. But for this example, let's maybe go for some, uh, we're going to add some grass over here. Maybe some of these rocks will be uh, like white or a very dark or a very light gray and maybe we'll scatter some sand on parts of the hilltop over here. So I'm going to start with the base and you can see you can even apply textures on certain areas and I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that. Uh, the, actually using areas is going to allow you to it's going to give you a lot more flexibility on where you want to place certain textures in your scene because remember I showed you earlier we can actually use brushes with the area as well. Anyway, when you click on add, it's going to bring up a library and this library is built directly into World Creator with just a bunch of uh, these tileable materials. Now you can go ahead and even import your own materials and websites that I use quite regularly uh, for materials and I'm not endorsed in any way. I just believe in these websites because they have awesome products. If I'm looking for environmental stuff, I'll either use Polygon or Quixel Mega Scans, which is fantastic because these guys actually scan their materials. You can go ahead, download that stuff and you can even import and use those materials directly in World Creator. Right, and you can see you can filter this by diffuse, normal or the displacement. So we're starting with the base, which is actually going to be this grass over here. Right, so I'm using this texture. I'm going to go for this ground grass. And there we go. It applies that material onto our terrain. And now if I zoom in over here, you can see that this terrain is being tiled infinitely. So it's really important that you get a tileable texture. It's just a lot easier to work with. And obviously you want that material to tile just so it makes the texturing process a lot easier. Let me just press F to center that. Okay, so here we go. We're in the texture section over here. 
And the first thing, first thing that I'm going to mention, you can see here by texture properties, what are the textures that are combined on here? We've got the diffuse and normal map and a height map that makes up our uh, material over here. Okay. But uh, something I want to show you guys, currently you can see the tiling is actually quite visible. And one way to actually fix this, so the tiling looks a lot more natural. If you go to general, you'll see we've got some more texturing properties over here. You can click on this uh, option called eliminate tiling and it just go ahead, it goes ahead and it basically gets rid of the the repetitiveness of this tileable material. Right, it just makes it look a little bit more uh, believable and more aesthetically pleasing. So that's just one way to get rid of that. Uh, you can actually use some apply some perla noise on top of this uh, material as well. So if that's something you're going for, you can add that breakup of perla noise. Try planar uh, is also another uh, awesome way of uh, basically getting your material to look seamless. I don't use it that much. And then height base is another option I don't really use that much when I'm texturing. So I'm going to go back to textures and then let's move down over here. Okay, so the operation, uh, we'll actually get to that later. Or if you really need to use it, it's like Photoshop where you can change the overall layer type to something like multiply or add. If you know how these layers how these um, features or these functions work in Photoshop, you'll probably be familiar with them within World Creator. Uh, but again, I don't really use the operation that much. Uh, this lock tile size is going to allow us to scale the overall texture. So you can see right now while it's locked, I'm scaling it uniformly. So I can scale that all the way up and now you can start seeing those little blades of grass on there. It's a lot more visible, right? So you can do that or I can untick that and do it non-uniformly if that is something that I was going for. And then the lock tile offset uh, will maybe come in handy if let's say there was part of you wanted this part of the grass to maybe be on this part of the rock over here for whatever reason you can go ahead and actually offset that. Now you can see that part of the grass is on this area. So you've got the offset feature as well. And you can also do that uniformly or non-uniformly. And then you can even apply this uh, to fit the, the size of the entire terrain. Right? If that's something you're going for, of course, that looks really, really strange. So I'm just going to press Control Z and bring it back to this. Right, so I'm going to be starting off just with some basic grass on here. I'll maybe lock the tile size, increase the size of this grass texture a little bit. Right, so a little green green meadow well, we've got our terrain covered in this green texture and then we'll be continuing from here okay all right so as I mentioned earlier actually before we move on to these other features I mentioned earlier that we can use areas to apply different textures in very specific regions and it's going to be a really really powerful feature and function that we can use in conjunction with the texture tab so in this case I'm going to scroll up to the top over here let's add another layer and this layer is going to be rocks so I'm going to call it rocks and I'm going to go to my textures and the material I'm looking for is a sand Here we go lakeside beach sand All right so that's going to apply it onto my entire uh, material over here or my entire terrain and determining on what order you have this so you can see I've got the base at the bottom rocks on top I actually want to keep rocks where it is currently if I go to areas click add area All right and if you guys are suffering from a little bit like if your performance is taking a little bit of a hit you want to make sure you go to surface base and here by your precision let's maybe put that on two and 1024 by 1024 is fine just to work in for texturing. I'm going to go back to areas, go back onto default name. I'll actually call this rocks. And then over here by the blend map, I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And I want this to affect this region. And now if I go on edit blend map, we can use these brushes over here. Let's say I can increase the strength. And you can see my brush size is on 600, which is quite large. And I can start brushing on certain areas over here where I want this rocky texture to be. So now if I click on done editing a blend map and I just click on textures, right? To go to area and select rocks, you can see that rocky texture has just been applied 
exactly where we painted it. So now if I go back to areas, rocks, edit blend map, I can continue editing that. I can erase certain areas off and just use some of these awesome brushes in here. You can see some of them have very specific if effects applied to them. Right, so this can be very gradual. You can see this breakup in how it's being applied. And now if I go back to texture, you can see this is just a really, really awesome way to selectively, uh, selectively place uh, where you would want certain materials to be by using uh, the actual brushes from areas. So this is, like I mentioned, a, a very, very easy and intuitive way to just paint on where you would want certain uh, materials to be. Okay. All right, so I definitely recommend working on a lower resolution, especially when you're painting. And then you can just bump it up to something like 4K. And the results will look slightly different because it's just making the terrain a lot more detailed. And it's actually going to look a lot better. It's going to make everything look a lot more crisp. Uh, but yeah, when you're working in areas and you want to paint selectively, you with this blend map, play around with these brushes. Remember, you can import your own as well, your own alphas that you can use as brushes as well. And this is just going to be a really nice and intuitive way to selectively uh, paint uh, different areas on your terrain. Right, so I'm actually going to leave this. Let me maybe paint this area over here. Let's add in a little bit of the texture. Okay, so I want to make sure I've got rocks selected. And let's talk about some other stuff here as well. You'll see that we have an option called gradients. Now, I don't use this that much, but it allows you to create a gradient on the actual uh, texture. So you can see some one of this uh, part of the terrain can be let's see let's make that blue part of it can be red the other part can be blue and you can control the overall strength and offset of this gradient but this is something I don't really use that much uh, during my texturing process but you can see if you wanted a gradual shift in the colors over there you could do that all right but in some areas again it's just something I don't really use that much. This, however, the shade that you see over here is going to allow us to change the color of our default diffuse texture. So if I was maybe going for, I don't know, maybe some sand over here, I can go ahead and start making it exactly whatever color I want it to be. Let's right, so we want some sand in that region. And there we go. You just have to use that shade tab and then you're good to go. And this metallic and smoothness, like let's say maybe you had water over here and there's mud around the water region. You can actually adjust the overall glossiness of this area. So you can see over there by adjusting uh, the smoothness value and bumping it up, it makes this area look a lot more wet. Like there's some wet mud in that region and that that's basically how you control the overall look of that so I'm gonna just bring that back and of course we can use the brightness and contrast uh, to control how our, how our texture looks as well so that's just a nice way to blend our texture with other textures in the scene as well just by using those functions okay so our rocks actually became our sand so I'm gonna go ahead and just rename that and let's add another layer and this one's actually going to be the rocks this time so I'll say rocks I'll click on add and I'm going to add the let's see I'm going to add a sand a Kona Beach black sand All right it's going to apply it on our entire mesh or entire terrain and I'm going to go to shade over here and let's just make this let's see maybe I want to go to brightness bump this up a little bit Okay, now I'm going to show you a really, really cool way to actually um, basically lay out or procedurally place this texture so that it's being placed on the very specific parts of the terrain. And that's by using something called a cavity. Now, I don't know the exact definition of convex and con concave, but you'll see if I click on convex, uh, you'll see that it applies this material right on top. It seems like the highest part of the uh, terrain over here is where this material is being applied and then convex is almost like it's inverted so it puts it underneath so this is also a nice way just to procedurally 
place a particular material using the convex or concave. Now you can see this is just a really nice way to get this material uh, to be placed on the highest areas over here which is going to be the rocks uh, in the scene. So I'm going to go to shade. Let's maybe make this. I guess we're going to have dark rocks, lighter rocks in our scene. Right? I can also play around with some of these values over here, the overall step. You can see it covers different regions. Just play around with the sliders and see what they do. And you can increase the step size. You can see this is covering smaller areas. And this is just covering uh, a larger area. We can control the overall strength as well of this material. So maybe bump that up again. So we've got these light rocks in our scene over here. And then let's maybe go back to our sand. And we want that to be maybe a little bit darker. Right? So that is using the concave and convex just to procedurally place uh, that material onto different uh, features of the actual terrain itself. Okay. Right, so something I did mention, okay, if you're going to use areas to start texturing certain areas of your terrain, you want to make sure your resolution is low. But when you're using textures, you want to try and maybe go back to a higher resolution, right? Because it actually does look different. Remember, when we increase precision, it's subdividing this mesh and just adding a lot more detail. You can see now on this 4K resolution, uh, it looks a lot better, especially in certain areas like this. We've got more detail on the mesh. But now these rocks, you can see, are very faint. And it's changed. It's actually changed quite a bit. So that's something to keep in mind is the resolution that you're going to export at, you probably want to roll back to the resolution when you're texturing just to see how it looks at that resolution as well. So now if I go back to rocks over here on 4K, I can maybe increase the steps over here just to see how it looks at this 4K resolution. And that's just to give you a general idea. So just keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you are definitely changing your pre precision resolution to something higher to see how it looks at 4K as well. 4K is what I usually work with in my scenes. Alright, so this is just basic texturing that I thought I'll show you. And I'm going to go back to textures over here. Something else we can also do, let's see, I can add another layer. Let's add another one of these. All right. Uh, you can see over here, we can actually apply textures using a specific angle as well. So, if that's something you really need, where you need a specific angle, now you can see at 4K it's looking really crisp. Uh, you can go ahead and do that as well, and then you can see over here, just by adjusting this angle, is going to determine where it's being placed. Right, so that's just another way to procedurally uh, place those textures in your scene as well. So you can see that World Creator also has this auto save function, which just writes in areas and auto saving the file for you. Just in case the program decides to crash, you can always roll back to something. Okay, so there we go. We've got that angle for applying textures in our scene as well. You can see there's our lighter sand. This would be maybe our darker sand over here. Or I can try and try and match it depending on what I'm going for. Or we can maybe even use it for snow or something else in our scene. Right, but definitely look at reference images because there's a lot of complexity uh, with terrain. Uh, there's so much going on. And this would be the, like the basics or the basis of a terrain because obviously if we look at terrain there's there's blades of grass there's little stones rocks flowers depending on what type of terrain you're creating as well but i just thought i'll show you just the basics of how i quickly texture these terrains and you can see that you can take this stuff really really far if you start pushing these different features in here Right, so where this angle select could really come in handy, let's say maybe you're making some mountains with snow, 
If I went back to shade, let's put this on white and let's bump up the brightness over here. Uh, this angle select, just the way it gets placed on different terrain, you can see over here, if I go and deselect that, it actually it just looks really cool. And just by adjusting our angle over here, so that it's being placed somewhere else, you get some really interesting results. So it would actually look really cool, maybe with something like snow. But obviously you'd, you'd be spending a lot more time in here trying to get it to look as believable as possible on your terrain. But this angle select is a really, really neat feature. You saw I used this when I was actually creating those windy sand dune terrains. And uh, there's just something about this angle select that makes things look aesthetically pleasing uh, within the program. So you guys can play around with that. There we go. So there's some snow covered area over here. I'd probably could have a scene like that. So the snow is melted in other areas, but it's still present over here. There's so much you can do with the texturing, guys. Once you understand the basics of how this works, uh, you guys are going to have a lot of fun with this program when it comes to creating the terrain and then texturing it as well. Alright guys, so keep in mind I've been showing you how I use World Creator. There is some sliders and options that I haven't really looked into uh, like in depth. I usually use what's at my disposal, disposal and what works best for me. But there is some options here that I'll also show you. So we played around with Angle Select. Uh, slope Select is also pretty cool. Let me go ahead and disable Angle Select. So Slope Select, you'll see if I decrease this value over here, it's going to apply this a particular material according to the overall slope of our terrain. So you can see these areas over here where it's sloped and angled is getting more of that material applied to it. So this can also be a very particular look and feel that you may be going for. Maybe that will work nice with a canyon or something. Uh, so you just need to play around. Like I said, all of this stuff is playing around with the sliders and experimenting and seeing what they do. Uh, so you've got slope select, height select. Honestly, don't use this, but you can apply a material that's relative to where the ocean would be in your scene. All right, you can see. So this is where the lowest part is where the ocean would maybe come in and you can basically map that material in that region. Again, something I very rarely use while I'm texturing. Uh, noise select, this one can be useful. Let's maybe go ahead and put angle select back on as well. Uh, but you can actually break up, you'll see if I deselect noise, you can break up the surface of this texture by adding some noise applied to it. Okay, so I'm just going to create a break up if, if there's a particular use for that whenever you need to use it and you can go ahead and use noise follow sun direction I honestly never use roughness kind of works similar to noise again another option that I'm very rarely using I've showed you which options I use the most and how I texture these terrains and then it's just a matter of layering these textures to create complexity using areas to paint on uh, different materials in very specific areas and then once you've got the basics down and you know what to do you guys will be able to start texturing your own terrains but obviously go ahead play around with these different options see what they do and maybe you guys can also discover some really awesome stuff but now I've showed you the basics of how to texture terrain and I think after this I'm gonna go go ahead and actually texture this like how I mentioned in the beginning just with some dark rocks and putting some sand on here this would be considered a more intermediate texture terrain, but you can make it way more complex. Definitely use some reference images uh, to create something more believable as well. But now you basically have the basics. We've gone through everything over here, or everything that I use. Uh, the sediment surface I also never use, uh, but it's basically everything that I use uh, while I'm texturing. But again, play around with the sliders and see what they do. Maybe you can discover something awesome throughout the process as well.